All right, welcome to our YouTube video on the new math app called Dragon Box. This uh, app is going to help your students um, pretty quickly learn the basic rules of solving equations. And it, it actually does get quite advanced. And uh, the best part is the students don't really realize it's math. So um, I'm just going to quickly show you that. Right now, let's jump into the app here. And here it is, so you can see um, graphics look like any typical game. Once we get in here, you can uh, choose your avatar, create an avatar. I'm going to use this one here, Cool Gal, because my wife uh, unlocked quite a few levels yesterday when she was just toying around with the app here. So we'll click on that so we'll be able to jump around. You'll notice that we have multiple chapters. These would all be locked, but uh, since my wife made it into the fifth chapter, you'll see that they're all unlocked here. So normally, um, students would only be able to jump into chapter one and in each chapter there's 20 different questions um, or 20 different tasks so to speak so we'll start right from the start here and uh, when we jump into the first one it gives you a quick description of how to play the game so there's two sides just like any equation and a box and you'll quickly realize that the box is going to be your variable so to win, you need to isolate the box on one side. So your basic uh, ideology behind solving equations is given to us here. So students just know I got to get that box by itself. That's the task. Um, here it gives you little instructions as you go along. So here it's saying tap it. So I tap it and then it disappears. Tap it again, it disappears. And now this box is by itself. It doesn't seem um, very challenging yet. But you'll notice in, after every single task, it'll ask you or it'll, it'll show you with a check mark whether the box is alone, the right number of moves, so you, you know, you've got there in the right number of steps or the lowest number of steps, and the right number of cards. Um, so there's nothing that you could get, get rid of um, or cancel out. So here you'll see we'll do a little more practice here. You'll quickly realize that tapping on these little tornadoes, the tornado is actually representing the number zero. So basically you tap it and, it and it disappears. It's not necessary. So here it's saying each card has a knight card. So you can see here that uh, the die, the, the two, I've got a dark and a light one. So representing our positives and negatives, which will cancel and give you zero. So you'll see it's very, very easy at first. Students can do this just kind of following the basic steps. And then these rules just become something that they're, they're used to, to uh, following. So here you'll see the die, the, the fours, and uh, the fish, the night and day. Uh, when I put these guys on top of each other, once again, they cancel out. So just adding and subtracting. So really basic up front. And you'll see as it goes along, they'll start adding more cards, they call them, but really what they are is different terms and uh, positive and negative terms. So your night and day terms are actually positives and negatives. So I'm just going to jump out and I'm going to start jumping around to some different uh, tasks here. As we move along, um, so jumping to question number six here, it says to get three stars, remove all useless cards. So the goal here is making sure that you get rid of all your zeros whenever possible. And then you'll, you'll have the, uh, the, the equation solved appropriately. So I'll jump out of that one. That was number six. Uh, moving along to number nine, you'll see here that we're moving a little further. Now it's, it's showing you that you can actually pull cards from the deck and it's showing that whatever you do to one side you must do to the other so here you'll see that this little uh, this little dinosaur if you do it on one side you do it on the other and then these guys will cancel and now the box is by itself so this thing uh, gets pretty complicated and uh, as we move along here um, I'm just going to jump on to let's say number 14 now the best part is is that they slowly start introducing instead of having like animals on these cards they start showing variables all right and then slowly uh, kind of making it more math like so uh, for example in this case we can bring a, a negative c for each one and 
we can bring the night version of the fish, or the negative, so to speak. And we're in good shape. I made a mistake there because I didn't take those two night and day fish and actually combine them to make a zero. So the right number of cards did not um, was not satisfied, so I should have been able to eliminate them. So along the way, students are learning these little tricks. So as we move along to, let's say, number 20, we'll show you what, what happens here. We have more cards, and they're also showing you that you can actually flip the card from night to day, or positive and negative. So, and also notice the box is now an X term. You'll see that it's got that little, uh, those little dots kind of flying around it. So the box now becomes X. So we're slowly moving away from the whole game concept, and now we're getting closer into math, um, and some students will probably pick up on this. So in order to get rid of this positive C, I'm gonna need a negative C on both sides. So these guys are gone, and there goes my useless cards. And then I'll need a positive version of this guy. And these guys are gone. So you can see this uh, gets a little bit more difficult as we move along. And chapter one is now finished. Pretty cool because now you can actually share on Facebook and so, so forth. Um, and we'll move into chapter two. So you'll see I'm just going to randomly you know, pick a few as we go along here. Uh, number 10 I'll jump into. You'll notice that we now have fractions. They'll actually introduce that whenever they're on top, the cards are on top of each other. As long as they're the same card, you can take them and pop, uh, kind of pop them on top of each other into a one. And it kind of reiterates the idea of multiplying by one. So as you move along, it does get more complex, but they really, really scaffold it for the students. And once you get all the way along to chapter five, you're actually getting more into actual equation solving. So this is how far uh, my wife made it yesterday in about 40 minutes. Um, and you know, she's by no means the, uh, the math, math queen. She's done really well and she's made it into actual equations now. So now we don't have the two sides, we actually have an equation. And you can essentially do, use all the skills that you've learned along the way in order to help you isolate for the x over here. So now I'm going to bring in this negative 2. i got to bring the negative 2 in there. And you might even want to swap it around that way. Get rid of the 0. And now the x is solved. So you'll see that as you move along, these questions get into actual equation solving. So it's a really, really great way to get your students started on um, solving equations. So. Um, that's all for now. I don't want to go through every level with you there, but just to give you a quick little taste, um, once again, visit us on the Tap into Team Minds website. We've got all kinds of information for, uh, for educational technology. We've also got course resources if uh, you're teaching math in Ontario um, or other parts of the world. And uh, definitely drop us a line using the contact form. So hope to see you soon. And uh, if you have anything else to add, please definitely visit our website and uh, leave us a comment. All right. Take care and have a great night.